Hey, what's up guys? Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. You can check the description for everything you need to know, and I do all the hack rank and leak code solutions, so just check playlists on my channel if you want to see that. This question is a part of the Java series. It's like a Java tutorial on uh, hack rank, so I've been doing all these. There's 70 questions. I'm going to try and do about 50 today. Um, this says, it's called J uh, Java Static Initializer Block. So static initialization blocks are executed when a class is loaded. Uh, I didn't even know what these were before I read this problem, and you can initialize static variables in those blocks. It's time to test your knowledge of static initialization blocks. You can read about it here. So if we go here, it's this is the actual um, Oracle Java docs, and it says static initialization blocks uh, are normal blocks of code enclosed in braces. So these get executed when the class loads, it says, and they're preceded by the static keyword. So we have a static keyword, this is code. If we take this, we can copy this directly from uh, the Java docs, paste it in, and I'll explain this, right? Let's uh, restart this. This is the original code we're given for the problem. This is just like a main method. So right above the main method, this would be, um, this would be executed when the class loads. It doesn't have to be part of a method, it's just executed, and if we have multiple of them, it goes in order, top-down order, of where the uh, static initialization block is uh, you know, put into the code. So let's read what we have to do with these. So what are, they, what are they useful for? It says they're usually useful for initializing like static variables and stuff like that, so that's cool. And it says you're given a, a class solution with a main method, complete the given code so that it outputs the area of a parallelogram with breadth b and height h. Um, you should read the variables from standard input. So we're going to be given two variables, b and h. They're going to be integers, and we have to calculate area, so it's just b times h. Um, if b is less than or equal to 0 or h is less than or equal to 0, then we're going to get negative area, which we don't want, so we're going to throw an exception. Breadth and height must be positive without quotes, okay? Um, so there's two input lines. First contains b, breadth of a parallelogram. Next contains h, height of a parallelogram. They're between negative 100 and 100. If both are greater than 0, then the main method must output the area. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. So we're just going to use this, and what they want us to do here is just have these static variables. So we're going to have, um, you know, static int b, we're just going to declare it. Um, we're going to have static int h, we're going to declare it. And then we're going to have uh, static boolean flag. And we're going to set flag to be true by default, because down here in the main method, we're assuming, we're, we're, we're hoping that everything is going to go as planned, right? So we have if flag, if, if true, we're going to execute this code. So what happens is, when we find breadths and heights that are in the negative or equal to zero, we're going to throw an exception, we're going to set the flag equal to false, and that code's never going to execute, and we don't want it to execute because we don't want negative area. So let's delete this and uh, take our input. So we use scanner, we have experience with this, right? Scanner equals new scanner, and we use system.in, that means we're taking input, right? And now we have the scanner class, we're just going to set B directly from this static initialization block. We're initializing our variables that we declared up here. So B equals scanner.nextint, we just grab B, H equals scanner.nextint, we just grab H, and then we do scanner.close. You always have to close the scanner, I always forget about that. And then what we'll do down here is we'll have a try and we'll have a catch. And try catch is usually code that you want to try to execute, and then you throw exceptions based on something. So in our try, we're going to do if b is less than or equal to zero, right? Yeah, less than or equal to zero, or h is less than or equal to zero. That was the condition up there. I was just trying to remember it. Um, then we are going to set, first we're going to set flag equal to false, so that this code down here never executes. And then we're going to throw a new exception. So we're going to throw a new exception. And it's going to say, what is it going to say? It's going to say whatever we put up here. So it says, like, breadth and height must be positive. Yeah, right here. And you have to throw this into quotes. No big deal, right? Um, and then we're going to catch that exception. So we'll just do catch exception E. And then we'll do um, system.exit with a status of uh, status of zero, I'm pretty sure, is all you have to do to exit. And um, yeah, this should work actually. Um, actually, no, wait, do we do, we, we do a print down here, don't we? Oh yeah, we'll just print E. Yeah, system.out.print E, 
we'll print on a new line e so what happens is you throw the exception in it with uh, breadth and height must be positive in quotes and then you catch the exception e and then you catch what's in these quotes you catch the type of exception and then you could print it out down here so if we run this this should work I think it's system dot exit with a zero uh, is the exit code there we go yeah it worked perfectly okay great um, so yeah, I guess just takeaways from this are um, we haven't done exception stuff yet. So just try you try when you you try some code. If it doesn't work, you throw an exception, and then you have a catch block where you catch the exception. You can print it out, exit out of the program. Um, other than that, it's pretty pretty cool. The static initialization block um, up here maybe initialize some static variables. It's used when the comp the class first you know um, executes or so. That's it. Um, thanks for watching. Check out the next video. I'm doing, you know, 50 of them. So, um, all right. See ya.